What's going on YouTube? Tuesday, Tuesday videos. Um, it's because I have the day off. I got one in today, so I figured I got a couple of cards ready to go. So, four Spectre Hall of Fame and one Bart Star. Okay. I don't have any autographs of this guy because, you know, with the Spectre Hall of Fame, we're having multiples. Multiples of different uniform stuff. So, first autograph. It's not a very good autograph. Some of these are just going to be, I don't really care because there's, there's not many good ones. If I find a nice upgrade, I will. Uh, eBay box purchase. Andre Reed. So, it's my first Andre Reed. I wish it was better, but what can you do? This one's disappointing as well. What number was that? That was four out of 50. This one is a little disappointing. I do have the, the Rams uniform. It's the first card I actually got in the set. Uh, but this is the Colts uniform version of Marshall Falk. And the autograph is really not that well, but the price was right. So that one is 12 out of 50. Then I'm going to show this one because there's a reason why I'll show the last one last. Um, number 49 out of 50. In the Oakland Raiders uniform, which I already have an autograph of this in the San Francisco 49ers uniform. This will make some people irritated, but um, Jerry Rice in a Raiders uniform. 49 out of 50. I'll make all these up here in a moment. So, I already have one, but it's, that's the reason why I'm showing this card last. Because I don't have this guy at all, and it's one of those iconic... Um, autographs. I'm glad I have it. Number 49. I don't know number 49. I had. Is this right? Am I just dreaming? Yeah. 49 out of 50 on the Jerry Rice, then 49 out of 50 on this beauty inducted in 2015. Jerome Bettis. Iconic autograph. The autograph is not 100% perfect, but it's better than the ones I've seen. So it's really, really not bad. Really, really not bad. And so how I'm grading this stuff now, it's just like, you got to throw your hands up. I don't have to grade this stuff. I want good autographs, but I'm just not going to get a bunch of them on it. So four more for the set. That's, I don't know what number that gives me, but baby steps. And then last card is a Bart Star autograph, and I could 2004 and this make 2004 is for some reason I want to I don't know exactly what happened in 2004 but I'll, I'll give you the information uh, significant signatures from Dundas Classics 2004 Classics uh, mirror sticker Bart Star autograph and this is numbered 225 and why am I what was I trying to get to well the the information on this is you can see how the autograph and the sticker runs off and actually onto the card. For some reason, this is the third. I have two from Tops that he had the sticker was already applied first and then he had autographed later. I don't know what happened in 2004, but it's always the 2004 cards. So my guess is he had something going on and all of a sudden they just said, well, we have no time. We're gonna apply the sticker, you sign over it. And they must have did it all at one shot, all together. So nice action shot though. We should have had some background to it, but not not a not a, an eyesore of a card. It's pretty. It's it's basic. I like basic. At some point, it's it, it's clean. Um, it's an, it's just a classic card from the early two thousands. That's what they looked like. Not all of them. There were some better. Nice little hollow foil up in here. Little add touch. So Bart Starr, even, I've been spending a lot of money on my car, on these cards. Whew, it's been, it's been, it's been hectic. But uh, let's mag up the few that are not magged, like the Jerry Rice and the Reed and the, uh, and the Falk here. Uh, and we'll just talk a little, a little football. See, I didn't, I didn't waste your time talk uh, on the card part. But while we're... Going to work. I don't know why I like doing this on camera because it's, I mean, it's right here. I get it done at the same time. And we'll get the Jerry Rice out of here. Jerry Rice. The autograph is pretty darn good. 
there's like a little spot here and there that's not great, but but I was very happy with the overall. I've seen some bad ones. I've seen some bad ones of the Jerry Rice. It's, so Packers just defeated Dallas. And I really, I've never been so confused by a team uh, that the Packers had. It was the Philadelphia loss, just one of those losses? Or was it, uh, was Philadelphia, was Philadelphia under the radar really that good? And I think it has a little to do with both. But the Dallas win without having one of our biggest, one of our biggest players on the offense, and um, Devontae Adams out, was um, major, and we still, and they still beat that team. And the Dallas is no slouch; they haven't played anyone as good as the Packers, I would have to say, but they're not a bad team. They have everything on offense that to, to make them really, really good. Are they a great team? No. The Packers are a great team? No. I really don't think they're great. I think they're very, very good. Those teams are very, both teams are very, very good. I think if you had to compare the two, the Packers played significantly better uh, teams than the Dallas up to this point. Uh, I really think the Bears are really, really good, but they shoot themselves in the foot sometimes. The Vikings, gosh darn, I think we caught the Vikings at the right time. I really think they're really, really good coming along. They weren't when they played the Packers. They just weren't getting the ball to their wide receivers. It just wasn't happening. Um, which it should have been easier with Dalvin Cook running all over everybody. Uh, actually, the Packers did well against Dalvin Cook, uh, except for one run, one big, huge run for a touchdown. I mean, they let the big play happen. But if you take away that run. I don't think he has 60 or 70 yards, maybe. You know, but he ended up having a big day because of it. So, confused by this team? Yes. We are a few injuries away from being bad again. Uh, we can't afford injuries at inside linebacker, tackle, or safety. Any of those positions, we're in trouble. Offensive line, I think we have some decent backups. We're already playing one right now, and the backup was probably better than the starter at the beginning. Uh, it just, uh, I think the guy's proven it now. Elton Jenkins is playing guard, playing a pretty darn good guard for a rookie. Um, we lose a tackle. We lost uh, Bulaga last, partially last week, and uh, Alex Light got ripped wide open. Um, Bulaga came back and played against Dallas, played phenomenally. Bakhtiari is struggling. Uh, he's supposed to be our best offensive line, but he's struggling. But he's also facing some of the best pass rushers in um, the NFL. Khalil Mack and all those guys in the Vikings. And anyone can rush there. Um, Broncos, they, Broncos at the time had Chubb and Von Miller. So they're holding up. I mean, yes, they're going to get some calls because they're just not going to let Rodgers get hit unnecessarily. But... Um, Overall, the offensive line last week played way better than expected because Dallas has a good front four. Uh, we lost Corey Lindsley early in the game and uh, Lewis Packer stepped right in at center. Uh, but I was very proud of him. A couple of off-target shotgun snaps that really didn't, you know, they weren't easy to collect, but the Rodgers could get them in. It weren't like 20 yards over his head or anything, but... Uh, I really thought, because Elton Jenkins played center for his, like the last couple of years in college, that they would move Jenkins to center and Patrick to guard. That might be like something they might do this week, but I don't think so. The way they looked like they were just like, it was not not even a decision. Not even I don't think they want to make Jenkins play a whole different position uh, right now. I think he's nice and, um, I think he's comfortable at guard. Uh, but he's playing phenomenally there. Patrick played pretty damn good as other than a couple of snaps that were just errant. They were just not on target, but they weren't terrible. Uh, and he, he was pushing some guys around. Uh, I was happy. Billy Turner seems to be coming along a little bit better. 
the right guard position is in flux to me. Um, he plays well at times, and then he then then sometimes you're like, what is he doing? Uh, so, but overall, enough to win the game, enough to get uh, Aaron Jones four rushing touchdowns and a ton of yards, and you know which we don't see that often as Packer fans rushing the ball, but it makes everything that much easier if we can. Philadelphia took it away on us, and we were one-dimensional. We just got to find that way sometimes to run the ball. I don't care what you have to do. Uh, no more first and goal from the one and not running the ball, please. You you run it, you run it. Yeah, we ran it last time against Dallas. Didn't make We missed one of those same kind of things uh, there, too. We got to find a way to get it in. Just uh, no two ways around it. So that's me talking about Packers. You probably don't even care. But do we have a chance? Oh boy, there's some really good teams out there. Uh, but I, I think every team has showed some kind of flaw along the way that we that they can take a, each defense can take advantage of some of the offenses. Uh, I, there's not too many teams I would say, hey, they're just unstoppable. I don't see it. The NFL wants parity. Well, they got it. Because you can't keep a solid team together anymore in the NFL because of free agency and stuff like that. So, overall, Packers are playing well. Uh, they're beating teams that I really didn't think they were going to have a tough time going marching down to Dallas and beating them. But for some reason, they play well in Dallas. So, next thing is Monday night against the Lions. And they're a tough... That team, defensively, they're... Not terrible. I don't think... I think they're coming along, too. They're on the same kind of boat the Packers are. They're just... They're on the cusp of doing something great. They're, like, a couple players away already. Uh, but this division is so tight and so good that uh, no one's going to run away with it in the, cent in the central... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> in the division... Um, the sun, yeah. I just need to put the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in there and... Um, I do hate Dallas. I hate them right behind the Vikings. So, actually, right behind Tampa Bay. Uh, Warren Sapp sou soured me to Tampa Bay. I really hate Warren Sapp. <laughs> I really do. Uh, I don't know if there's a YouTube video or any kind of video on it, but the, all you got to look is Warren Sapp. Uh, I would probably look it up on YouTube at some point. Warren Sapp, uh, cheap shot against Chad Clifton. And you'll know why I hate Tampa Bay. <laughs> That was terrible. I can picture it in my head. It's clear as day. Uh, yeah. It makes Indomitian Sue look like uh, he's your uh, a caregiver. That's all I'm saying. So, that's it. Everything going on. I'm going to have some special Hall of Fame coming in, I guess, at some point. Had nothing in it the, coming in at the time. Um, that's all I got. Have a happy rest of the week and if your team's doing well awesome if not hope for the draft <laughs> thanks everybody for watching love you guys take care see you soon